In this module, we will study fluid flow and the application of numerical methods to fluid flow phenomenon. Here are two examples of why we need to use macro models. In the OTSG, there are hundreds or even thousands of tubes that make up the steam generator. To mesh just one tube would require a mesh with 5,000 nodes. Multiply this by 500 tubes and the mesh now has 2.5 million nodes just for the tubes. To mesh around each tube would require at least twice that many nodes. You can see how the mesh would grow rapidly if we tried to model each tube individually. The same rapid mesh growth would result when trying to mesh the perforated plate shown. These are just two examples of many common geometries that are simulated with CFD. Instead of modeling each individual tube or perforation, distributed resistance models are used. The many tubes or holes or other flow obstacles have the effect of increasing the pressure drop on the fluid flow. They may also change the flow direction, but overall it is the pressure drop that is most affected. Recall from viscous pipe flow studies, there were two losses that were used to represent viscous effects. The first loss, called a major loss, was due to the shear resistance of the pipe walls. The second loss, called a minor loss, was due to anything else that would cause losses, like entrance effects or valves. The distributed resistance macro model uses these same loss models to represent the excess pressure drop due to the presence of tubes or other obstacles. There are several ways to represent the distributed resistance. In the constant method, you would provide the K value directly. This value may be provided by a manufacturer. In the free area ratio method, you would specify the free area ratio. This is the ratio of the total open area to the total area of the screen or perforated plate. This free area ratio is used to calculate the K value for the resistance. It is a number between zero and one. In the friction factor method, you would provide the data necessary to calculate the friction factor based on the Moody chart. This would work well for a tube bank such as in the OTSG. In the head capacity curve, you would provide a table of values for the pressure drop or head versus the flow rate or capacity. This data would be used to calculate a K value for the flow resistance. The permeability model is a Darcy relation. This is typically used for soil or cloth. The permeability coefficient C is what is specified. In many CFD simulations, the fan or pump that is part of the model is not the part that is being studied. Rather, the fan or pump is just used to provide fluid flow in the model. In the receiver in the upper right corner, the two fans would be stock fans that are added to this receiver to cool the electronics. The placement or number of fans may be part of the design study, but the actual fan design is not. For these cases, we use a macro model of the fan instead of the fan itself. If we include the actual fan geometry in the model, it will add to the number of nodes and it also forces the simulation to be formed as a transient since the fan spins. However, we are only interested in the fan flow rate and the spinning speed to provide airflow and flow direction. For these cases, we can use a macro model of the fan. To do this, we represent the fan as a block part and specify it as a fan material type. The data required for this material type is the flow rate, the rotational speed, and the flow direction. For most fans, you would specify the flow rate as a constant. Pumps may have a pump curve associated with the pump. For that case, you would specify the head capacity curve for the pump. Note that you can control when the fan is on or off by a thermostat. This is sometimes useful for electronic equipment like your laptop. Like the axial fan or pump, centrifugal pumps and blowers are not the parts that are being studied. Rather, they are just used to provide fluid flow in the model. For these cases, we use a macro model of the pump or blower. If we include the actual pump or blower geometry in the model, it not only adds in the number of nodes, but it also forces the simulation to be a transient since the blades in these parts rotate. For the blower material type, the data required is the flow rate, rotational speed, axis of rotation, and the inlet and outlet surfaces of the blower or pump. As with the axial fans and pumps, you can specify the head capacity curve instead of a constant flow rate. You can also control the blower with the thermostat if needed. For some CFD simulations, there may be very thin solid parts in the model that must be modeled to represent the conduction of heat across a thin part. To mesh these very thin parts would again increase the number of nodes needed in the model. For example, a guide vane that may be a few millimeters thick may be part of a duct system that is 2 to 3 feet in cross-section and 10 to 20 feet in length. 
If we mesh the thin guide vein, we would have a model that may exceed 200,000 nodes for even a simple duct. Instead of meshing the thin parts, we can use the shell material type to represent the thin part. If you want to model the guide veins in Inventor, you just have to build parts that have included the thin guide veins as surfaces on those parts. The CFD example model is an example of an HVAC duct system. The system uses a centrifugal blower to force air through the ducts. There is a filter at the inlet to trap any incoming dirt particles, and a cylindrical filter after the blower to keep dirt from blowing out the exit duct legs. Three guide vanes are used to direct the flow around the inlet duct bend without introducing large recirculation regions that are typical of elbow flows. An inventor assembly has already been created and is named HBAC.IAM. As we have in all of our previous CFD simulations, we will merge the small edges in this model, and also we will use the millimeter system of units. Since most of the parts in the HVAC assembly are air parts, we begin by assigning air to every part in the assembly model. One important note about distributed resistance macro models is that they need to be surrounded by air or fluid parts in order to, for the software to recognize them. The first macro model that we will assign is for the filter in the inlet duct section. The K value for this filter is 50. This is assigned to the through flow K. Through flow indicates that this is the main flow direction through the filter. The other directions are completely blocked for this filter. So we will assign high values for the K value in these two directions. Since the filter is not lined up with the coordinate axis, we also have to include the flow or through flow direction for the filter. We can do this by selecting a surface. And the normal for that surface will be the through flow direction. Next, we can assign the outlet filter. It might be easier to hide the part around the outlet filter so you can see it better. The K value for this filter is also 50. In this case, we left the K values for the other directions be zero. This is equivalent to setting them to very high values. Since this is a cylindrical filter, we have to choose the flow direction and click the radial button on the flow direction window. Then you can select the axis of the filter as the normal direction 1. The blower is a centrifugal blower slash pump material type. In our case, it's a blower. Again, we're going to hide parts so that we can see the bl blower more clearly. We can assign the flow rate and the rotating speed on the edit window.
Finally, you will need to select a surface whose normal is the axis of rotation. And then also the surfaces that make up the inlet and outlet to the blower. In our case for the outlet, we have two surfaces that form the circumference. We could have a thermostat, but in this case, we won't need a thermostat. To assign the guide vanes as shells, you will need to change the selection type on the top ribbon to surfaces. Then select the nine surfaces that comprise the, guide, the three guide vanes. You may have to hide the volumes around the guide vanes to be able to select these surfaces. The guide vanes are one millimeter thick aluminum. We don't have any materials since the last material database we use was my materials. If we go back to the default, you can see that there's aluminum in there. For the HVAC duct system, the flow is induced by the centrifugal blower, so we have no inlet boundary conditions to set. All of the openings are exposed to atmospheric conditions, so we set P equals zero on all of these openings. Based on the internal model pressures, the air will either flow into or out of these openings. Mesh sizing will begin as usual with an automatic mesh size. So we'll set that automatic size. Now there's a problem with a small scale in here. We're going to refine around there anyway. So where those two orange bubbles is where the problem is. So we'll refine the entire mesh a little bit to overcome those small little mesh problems. Then we're going to refine by the blower, so we're going to hide the materials around the blower. And we're also going to refine by the cylindrical filter where there's a large pressure drop. The blower, we just want to establish a good flow. And then near the guide vanes, since they're so thin, we're also going to refine the mesh there too. You can see those two areas where the orange bubbles are. We've refined the mesh there, so that should take care of the problem that the mesher saw. The physics of the HVAC system fluid flow model match up with the default values of incompressible, turbulent, and steady state flow. So we'll run 100 iterations, which is the default. After 100 iterations, the pressure and velocity are fairly con converged. You see the global pressures here show the effects of the macro models. First, at the inlet filter, there's a steep pressure drop across the filter where the distributed resistances were the distributed resistance was defined. You can also see the pressure rise across the blower. Pumps and fans not only induce flow, but they also create a rise in fluid pressure. At the cylindrical filter, you again see the pressure drop across the filter due to the distribute, distribute, distributed resistance values for the filter. Also here, you see the higher pressure where the blower airflow impinges on the filter resistance region. Notice that the overall pressure drop for the HVAC system is zero gauge. We specified this pressure at all of the openings. This means that the blower had to produce enough pressure rise to overcome all of the pressure drops in the system. To see the effects of the shell parts that form the guide vanes near the inlet, you can right-click on the pressure color legend and choose set to part. 
then click any of the parts or volumes near the guide vanes. This will highlight the pressure distribution in this region. You can see that the pressure is higher on the underside of the shells than it is on the top of the shell. The underside is where the flow impinges on the veins. We can look at the flow direction by plotting velocity vectors on cutting planes. In the figure, we have placed the cutting plane normal to the Z direction, making it a Z plane, at the center line of the blower. The vectors show the centrifugal flow pattern due to the blower rotation. The vectors are colored by pressure, so you again you see the pressure rise across the blower. When the flow reaches the cylindrical filter, it is being deflected down and around this flow resistance region. The vector colors also show the pressure drop across the filter. The traces are also a great way to see how the flow develops through the HVAC duct system. Here we look at the rectangular seed type with a hexagonal pattern. We place the seeds at the inlet to the HVAC duct system, and we can animate the traces to follow the flow development. Using 200 seconds for the animation time will let you follow the individual traces better. For this model, some traces in the pattern may never quite make it out of the model. You can see this because the animation takes a very long time. You can zoom into the model to see the flow pattern in specific areas like the blower or filter area. This concludes our video on special topics macro models for fluid flow and CFD.